Bram Merton. He is a professor over at the National Oceanography Center in Southampton in the UK. Uh, Bram, good to have you on the show. Um, the debate about uh, deep sea mining has become, uh, no doubt, increasingly polarizing. You have sort of environmental campaigners basically trying to uh, say, let's ban this. Why is this wrong in your opinion, you think? I think we have to face the fact that we have right now um, a, a real climate problem, real climate emergency. And these critical metals, these uh, minerals from the deep sea are one of the ways in which we can actually try and address that critical uh, emergency today um, <clears throat> by allowing us to do what we call this energy transition. The metals we're talking about are not so much those which are needed for mobile phones or disposable consumer products. They're really the things which are going to drive the energy transition to zip net zero carbon, things like cobalt. So if we take cobalt just as one example, um, it, Many countries, including the UK and in Europe, there's a governmental pledges to move towards electrified cars. Those cars require batteries. Batteries are also being used and muted in terms of energy storage. But these all require cobalt, they require nickel. So much so, that it's just not enough in terms of the on-land supply. You know, on-land supply at the moment is producing about 90,000 tons of cobalt a year. If just the UK alone went to all electric cars, We'd need three times as much of that in the next few years alone. And that's just the UK. So we have a real problem here. Uh, Bram, I totally uh, understand your, your argument when it comes to tr transitioning into, into zero carbon. I'm going to get to that in a second. But um, if I could ask sort of our director to play some of the footage that demonstrates some of this, this uh, uh, deep sea mining. I mean, you look at it, uh, these robotic dredgers that are sort of weaving up and down uh, the surface um, or, or the bottom of the floor. I mean... That has to be damaging, though. Yeah, it would be. At the moment, there is no deep sea mining. These are all tests which are being done. Um, for, for sure, any kind of extractive industry is going to create some kind of environmental impact. The question is, how much is that environmental impact going to be? And we don't know. So lots of research is being done. The footage you're looking at now is... Uh, that from various commercial companies that are just testing out different sorts of machines to kind of harvest and pluck these min minerals off the seafloor. Some of the concerns that WWF are talking about are about sediment plumes, the dust you can see kicked up now in your footage. It's, you know, they're concerned about whether these plumes are spread over thousands of square kilometers. Research being done at the moment proves that that's not necessarily the case. And also, you know, we, we, we have to bear in mind that the amount of impact here is going to be an awful lot less potentially than we know is going on on land, where we strip rainforests for nickel. You know, we 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 use child labour in mines in in the Democratic Republic of the Congo for cobalt. You know, there there are lots of problems with the sources of metals that we have today. So it's all about balance, and I think you know we have to look at this um, very carefully. We have to be very ca careful about the environment. Absolutely, no one wants to destroy. You know the environment in, in, in the process. But we have to balance, you know, the various needs and, and also be aware of what we know and what we don't know. We know quite a lot, but of course, we, there's a lot more we, we need to know as well. And the third thing I'd like to say, which is really important, is that deep sea mining out in the middle of the ocean will be strictly regulated by the International Seabed Authority. This is a UN established body which oversees all kinds of mining on the sea, sea floor in the deep ocean. So I think those things alone kind of give us some confidence that the, the environment won't necessarily be wrecked in the way that uh, some okay. environmental groups do. Tell fear. me this. I mean, you, you say this and you've said this uh, in, in some of the articles that I've, that I've read. Um, you say that deep sea mining can sort of provide the raw materials for zero carbon transition. Um, so why would you actually have companies, um, if to name a few, BMW, uh, Google, Volvo, Samsung, they've all uh, petitioned for a moratorium uh, on this. I mean, they don't want deep sea diving. But what you're saying is, you know, the metals that could be uncovered uh, could be very useful for these companies. I, I think you have to ask those companies themselves what, what, why they are signing up for a moratorium. I'd like to know what, where they think their supply chains for cobalt and nickel are going to come from. Are they just relying on the current land-based mining because that's not enough by any stretch of the imagination there's there, there's an order of magnitude 
not enough cobalt and nickel to supply the demands of these motor manufacturers as they move towards electric vehicles. So they're playing a very strange game. Are they pretending that the, the current situation is, is sufficient? Or um, I, I don't know, you, you'd have to ask them. But they're, they're, it's very easy to say no to something and not provide an answer to a problem which we have right now. So I think it's up to them to come up with answers as to how they're going to source the metals that they need for their, for their technologies as they move forward. That's a fair question, right. Uh, Brian Merton, we're gonna leave it there. Fascinating subject, and I do appreciate your analysis. <laughs>